The next question is all about the Doppler effect. Now, the Doppler effect is a very easy chapter. Um, they can't really make the Doppler effect that difficult. There's mainly two formulas that you need to remember. Both of them will be given to you on the formula sheet. So the one is that the Doppler effect formula goes frequency of listener is equal to V plus or minus the velocity of the listener over V plus or minus the velocity of the source multiplied by the frequency of the source. Now I'll give you a quick little reminder. This one here is the frequency of listener is going to be frequency heard by listener. Um, your V is velocity sound in air. And VL is going to be um, velocity of listener. Um, VS, velocity of source, is going to be frequency of the source. <clears throat> okay. Then there were two main rules that we that we need to remember. So let's let's do another little text over here. If um, if source and listener move towards each other, um, use a plus at the top. Use a minus at the bottom. Okay, now if they move away from each other, then the opposite, use a negative at the top and then use a positive at the bottom. I'm talking about when you use the equation. Okay, then the other formula that is very, uh, or that pops up every now and then is this one over here, V, equals to F multiplied by wavelength. Okay, that is another formula that you need to remember where I'm just gonna quickly type this for you guys. This is velocity of the wave. This here is the frequency of the wave. And then this is the wavelength of wave. Now, why would we need to know that formula? Well, it's not that common that they do this, but sometimes they do. Um, we can see that the Doppler effect is all about frequency. Okay, that's what we really care about, frequency. But sometimes they are gonna give you wavelength. And if they give you wavelength, then you need to know how to convert it into frequency so that you can then use the Doppler effect. Make sense? Cool. So I'm gonna take all of this other stuff away now. So let me quickly draw out a picture for you guys of um, what's actually happening in this question. So what we have, it sounds like we have a, um, I'm gonna draw a top for you. So a road, here we have a road and we have a vehicle. We have a vehicle parked over there and it is, it's got some alarm that's busy going off. Okay, so there's an alarm going off. That's my sound wave showing that there's an alarm. And that alarm has a, or those wavelengths coming from that vehicle have a wavelength of 0 0.34 meters. Now, all of a sudden we've got a police car that is on its way or it's going past. And the driver of the police car hears a sound with a frequency of 50 Hertz lower than the sound emitted by the alarm. So the police driver is hearing a frequency that is less than the alarm of the car. That means the police car is busy driving away. Remember when we spoke about that a few weeks ago, if the person, if the two vehicles are moving away from each other, then the listener will hear a frequency that is lower and if the two vehicles are moving towards each other, then the listener will hear a frequency that is higher. So the drivers, obviously, the police car is driving away. All right. Now, the first question says, calculate the frequency of the sound emitted by the alarm. So they just want this frequency over here. So we'd use this formula. 
Now you might be thinking, what is the velocity? Is it three times 10 to the eight? No, it's not. That is the speed of light. So then Kevin, what is the speed of sound? Here it is. They usually take it as 340. So you can say 340 equals to frequency multiplied by the wavelength of 0 0.34 meters. And so you can work out the frequency of this alarm system, which would give you a value of a thousand. That's a nice number. A thousand and it's measured in Hertz. Okay, and so that is our first question complete. Okay, this is the same question, by the way. So let me draw my beautiful picture again quickly. So just remember that we've got a vehicle parked over here. And we have a police vehicle on its way going past. And we know that um, this frequency of the alarm system is a thousand hertz okay and they say that the patrol car moves a distance of x meters in 10 seconds calculate the distance guys that is there to confuse you we do not care about distance and time what we care about in the doppler effect is velocity so let's just go worry about the velocity for now let's not worry about distance and time we can use that at the end now, remember what we said, that if they are moving away from each other, remember what we said? We said that then you use a negative at the top and a positive at the bottom. So my formula will now look like that. I'm using a negative at the top and a positive at the bottom. Okay. Now, the frequency of the listener. Who's the listener in this question? It's the police officer. Okay. Okay. The velocity over here is the velocity of sound, which is 340. So we can say frequency of listener equals to 340 minus the velocity of the police car. Now, we don't know what the velocity of the police car is, so we just leave it like that. Then this will be 340 plus the velocity of the source is, um, well, the source would be the alarm, the alarm system, and that car is not moving. How do I know that? It says that the alarm is parked, okay? So if you parked, you're not moving, right? So that would be zero. Oh yeah, we can just leave it as frequency of source. The frequency that the listener hears, which is the police officer, is gonna be whatever the frequency of the source is, minus 50. Frequency of the source is a thousand. We already worked that out. Okay, then it's an easy question. Fantastic. Okay, so, so now we can just go calculate everything a little bit. So this will be 950. And then at the top here, we'll have 340 minus VL over 340 multiplied by a thousand. Now there are multiple ways. Um, there are multiple ways that you can solve this. So I'm just gonna do one way, but you can definitely do other ways. So what I think I'll do is I'm gonna take this 340 over here and I'm just gonna multiply it up to the top. So that would be 950 multiplied by 340. And then actually, yeah, let's get rid of this beautiful drawing over here. So that's gonna be 950 multiplied by 340. And then I'm gonna divide by a thousand. That's this thousand over here. And so that's gonna be equal to uh, 340 minus the velocity of the listener, which is the velocity of the police car. Now I'm just gonna go calculate the velocity of the police car immediately because this is very easy for you guys. And what you should find if you move everything around is that the velocity of the police car should be uh, 17 meters per second. Okay. Now we can go use their silly little distance and speed formula over here. Okay. So we know that from grade, I don't know, grade six, no, probably like grade nine. We know that, um, we know that uh, speed or velocity, if you want, is equal to distance over time, right? So if we know the speed is 17, let's switch off my video over here. So if we know that the speed is 17 and the distance is X, 
and the time is 10, well, then it's easy, right? We can now calculate that the distance that the police officer will be able to move is 170 uh, meters. And there is our final answer.